Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nerd Continuity where we talk about design, development and all the other crazy sort of stuff that we find online. Today we're gonna be featuring my interview with Steve from Skysilk. If you don't know Skysilk.com, it's an amazing VPS provider that I've been using for the past five months to build my own forum and do a bunch of tutorials related to DevOps. Skysilk is finally stepping out of beta on September 1st, so there's no better time to talk with Steve about all the amazing features that SkySilk has to offer. Enjoy! So you're Steve, right? Yeah, and it's, <laughs> I just wanted to say it's awesome to finally uh, speak with you. Yeah, me too. Uh, finally, we're meeting probably <laughs> like if yeah, can call exactly. it like that but yeah no thank you so much for your time thank you so much for agreeing such a short notice to this interview it's it's fantastic no of course i mean that's what we're here for okay so uh who are you uh tell me who are you why you're here what are we talking about today so me personally um my name is steve uh, i actually handle the marketing over here at sky silk and the reason we are speaking today is mainly because um uh, I just wanted to get the word out about our official launch, which is going to be happening as of today. It will be tomorrow, but um, I assume whenever this interview goes live, it'll be the actual day of, yes. um, but the actual date is September 1st. And so, as I mentioned before, we're just trying to get the word out and kind of explain all the different features that we've put in, the newly available pricing plans, any sort of early sign-up rewards that we're giving out just so people are aware and ultimately just save the money on yeah. deploying VPSs. So I am a huge fan of Skysilk. Probably my audience knows that because I mentioned Skysilk pretty much in every episode and every video that I make. And I actually use Skysilk to do some of my tutorials and I'm super happy about it. But for the users that uh, are hearing this for the first time, they don't know what SkySilk is. Can you give us a quick overview and what do you offer? How do you stand in terms of like your competitors, like you're similar to, you're different from and blah, 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 stuff like that? Yeah, of course. I mean, at the core of SkySilk, essentially we are VPS hosting platforms. So, you know, we always like to think of ourselves as a canvas and whatever you do with the servers that you deploy is ultimately up to you. Um, and so we try to provide like a simple infrastructure that people can use um, with easy, just one click deployments. We have a lot of turnkey templates for developer tools, uh, WordPress if you want to host a blog, e-commerce sites, just web development tools, pretty much anything you could imagine that you want to use a server for. A lot of our users actually currently use it for hosted games and everything like that. And of course, we also have a lot of Linux operating system distros, um, you know, like the popular ones like Ubuntu, CentOS, mm -hmm. Fedora, Debian, you name it. So really what we are is we provide VPS for people to essentially provide whatever task they want through that server themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. And I want to stress the thing about the easy to use a like one click install because I was really impressed when I use it for the first time when I was able during creation of my first first VPS to set up a password and disable right away the login via password. So just logging only via SSH and I was able to upload my SSH key without mm -hmm. the usual shenanigans that you boot up a server and then you log in and then you set up a password and then you have to access your config file to disable password login and all this kind of stuff. Instead, it's all automatic and it's, it's, really, it's really easy to use. Did you notice uh, an adoption from highly technical users or just all, mostly because of the easy of use and easy access one-click install that you offer? A lot of like non-DevOps, non-savvy users started getting interested in booting up a VPS and seeing how it works. Yeah, I mean, a big form to our model is that we want to make things as easy as possible. Um, the password disable enable being one of those things. Um, mm -hmm. Some people prefer to use that. I myself, I prefer to use SSH whenever I can. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, along with that, we all, we're always brainstorming of different ways where we can make it easier, add a button to the user dashboard, or we call it the VPS dashboard. 
basically just add all these functionalities that will in turn make it easier for people who m- might not be too familiar with a BPS or how to use one mm-hmm. or have never done any sort of shell scripting or yeah. uh, know any Linux commands in general. You know, for example, like you mentioned, you have to go in the config file to disable password login. Um, a lot of beginners obviously wouldn't know how to do that or yeah. even how to CD into a different file. So um, that being said, yeah, something we are always striving to do is make things easier for people, not necessarily dumb things down, yeah. but just save people time ultimately. And, you know, time is money, of course. So Absolutely. we we al- we're always trying to find different functionalities and features of ways to do uh, specific tasks like that. Mm-hmm. That's great. The options available around here for like cloud computing, online server, and even like buying or like purchasing a really simple cheap level like server online it's just it's everywhere it's like it's not hard to find a thousand different options it's kind of even overwhelming and usually what stand out from the from all these plethora of services are the usual AWS DigitalOcean or Microsoft Azure that is trying to push with a shit ton of marketing and it's just oh, kind yeah. of like mind blowing what they're doing. But why? And this is kind of a silly question, but why did you decide to start a cloud computing business in this environment that it's already cluttered? Um, I mean, well, as I've mentioned before, like the way we view the cloud is that, like I said, as essentially a canvas Mm -hmm. and you know being the creative team we are i'm sure i can speak for everyone saying that maybe Mm -hmm. some others here might not want themselves described that way but (laughs) is that offensive (laughs) being creative (laughs) yeah i don't know some people might take offense to that these days but yeah essentially what we wanted to provide was a platform for, for people to use and the possibilities of what you can do with a cloud platform are really endless and like you mentioned the bigger guys before like aws and microsoft is on azure in, in general i don't want to give a too much of a plug to them of course you know, yeah, you know sure. we're talking about sky silk but yes. you see a lot of machine learning models being deployed on there so mm-hmm. there's a lot of potential for things you can do and that kind of ties back into what i was speaking about on so, adding features that make things easier for people there's so much you can do to further your platform and be different because it's so malleable yeah. And just the cloud in general is malleable. It can use it can be used for essentially anything. So it's the way we see it is more than just a VPS hosting platform, mm-hmm. which I mean we essentially are. You know, we provide servers for people to use and perform their own tasks on those. But mm-hmm. what our platform could actually become in the future is, like I said, the possibilities are truly endless. Yeah. What I love about SkySilk is the like I, I, I use server, I've been using server and VPS and cloud platform for a very long time, for almost like six years. And what I love about SkySilk, it doesn't try to over brand itself and everything, it's easy to use. You use the proper wording and this is gonna be the last time where I talk about the competition, but still <laughs> like all the other competitors, even Google, they wanna brand themselves because they wanna stand out. So they changed names to simple things just to be cool, which I don't understand because it's a huge barrier, entry level barrier for users that are not used to that. Instead in SkySilk, if you need to boot up a server, you just add like create a new VPS, create a new server. You add your SSH keys, it's not all branded with weird words and weird terms that every time you- Right, we don't color VPS is, you know, like like cloud chairs or (laughs) that'd be cool yeah (laughs) and appealing to people and you know it's funny you bring that up because when i was actually first learning development myself and um, command line and all that Mm -hmm. i actually was using google cloud and i remember getting in the platform and i was like what the hell is all this yeah i don't understand anything that's happening here so then i just found myself using all these tutorials online and you know one thing with especially developer community is like you can't bs them like yeah. they, they'll, they'll sniff out marketing jargon, they'll sniff out all that kind of stuff. And so that's why we try to make it one of our goals to be as transparent as possible with people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for example, why we set up our Discord server, because we want to actually speak with our users and see what they actually need, rather than just assuming that they want a, a trendy name for something mm-hmm. or these features that might not actually be applicable to any of them. Um, so, you know, like I mentioned before, you have to be extremely transparent with communities like this because you know these are smart people we're dealing with and they they know exactly what they want when it comes to their tools and that's exactly what they're going to search for so um just being as 
forward and direct as possible is definitely is definitely a plus and uh, i'm glad that you see that within our platform. oh yes absolutely i was like feeling at home it's like oh finally they speak english finally <laughs> <laughs> i can understand what i'm doing not spending as you said an hour of searching tutorials because i don't know what something sure. is called yeah. it's stupid uh, so you had a very long beta period. How long was it? One year more than a year? So we started the beta period in early 2017. Okay. Um, so just rounding up, it's been about a year. Yeah. And so something. a year and a half has changed at yeah. this point. And uh, did you start immediately as soon as you started the beta, the beta period, like offering free VPS to every new user or it came after a while? Yeah, so I mean, once we started the beta period, the whole point of that is to be able to test the platform, mm -hmm. mitigate any bugs that we might find, have our users help us find the bugs, of course, and that was a big draw to it. You know, we'll we'll reward you if you do find us bugs yeah. um, and fix all of those. You know, fortify our security, make sure we were able to identify people who might be trying to DDoS or mm -hmm. um, run malicious scripts or basically use their server for any. Um, illegal or yeah. otherwise against our terms of service uh, type of purpose. Mm -hmm. So being in beta that long has really allowed us to find all those holes and plug them and just essentially solidify the service before we actually launch it. Because we, w we don't want any major issues, of course, to arise once we do go live. And so we feel that being in beta for this amount of time, we were actually able to fix everything before actually launching the product and so it's been a big help yeah absolutely uh was the beta period like shorter before and then you decided to extend it or like how did it change once you open and you start having traffic on your platform um you know it's it's really tough to plan for any unforeseen circumstances i mean every business i'm not sure if you uh, watch the show Silicon Valley or not, but uh -huh. <laughs> it kind of, it really does. I know it's satirical, but it really does capture the inside of a startup and where, where they are from the beginning, you know, issues they run into, mm -hmm. you know, little arguments they might have within their team or having to postpone certain launches of features because they figure out something new or they want to yeah. try a different direction, you know, so it, it's almost like watching an autobiography at that point. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there's definitely roadblocks and it's the same, same to be said with any company that's already um, well known or doing mm -hmm. well for themselves. They're always running into certain things. Um, so there, were, there the, the beta period was never really planned to start at a specific date or end at a specific date. It was mm -hmm. more so once we felt we were ready to actually deploy that um, we decided on a specific date for the launch. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so every time I talk about SkySilk, especially in the past like three, four months, I was like, hey, sign up. There's a free VPS. You can use it. You can boot up as many machines as you want and destroy it and tested it's amazing uh the first question pretty much like 90 percent of the time was like why is it free where's the catch uh, mm -hmm. does that ever happened to you like you did you have user asking uh, like is it a, a real thing this thing that you're doing or is just like for marketing oh of course uh, we we all, we had plenty of people ask those questions and you know personally i blame the websites that say they're free and then they end up charging you without you knowing it after yes. a month and then or they conveniently put it in the little text at the bottom of the page you know you have to cancel before yeah. the, this date or you'll get charged you know we will never do that mm -hmm. the purpose of us being free was solely to allow users to come on our platform like we wanted them to break things we wanted them to find you know some strange bug where if you reloaded your browser mm -hmm. while you were halfway scrolled through the page clicking a button that all of a sudden things moved yeah, You know, we wanted them to find those weird things. That was the biggest, really the purpose of offering it for free, essentially allow us to test the platform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that being said, once we go live, you know, we're, we're not going to pull the rug out from underneath our users and say, oh, you got to pay us now. You know, <laughs> if if you're going to migrate your machine or you decide to, you know, we'll notify everyone of any charge they would ever have. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, the free, I mean, we you could say we used it to our advantage from a marketing perspective being in beta because everyone likes to have stuff for free but it definitely raised some speculation of mm -hmm. course when you know because we needed users uh, a valid form of payment to essentially verify identity you know that definitely has some hands raised in the room but mm -hmm. that being said it's not like we're trying to trick anybody by any means um, like i said before the purpose of it being free was so we could test the platform and yeah. you know if people do decide to actually start using the 
live platform, mm-hmm. you know, we'll be completely transparent about any any time they would ever have to spend any money mm-hmm. whatsoever. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the, that's what I always said to everyone. It's just like, yes, it's free because the word free doesn't have a star at the end and a little yeah. text like it a payoff. It doesn't have the terms and conditions yeah. or the guy talking really fast at the end of the commercial. <laughs> First 24 hours are free and then you will charge $100 a minute and stuff like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, so you're finally going live. This interview will be released on September 1st. So mm-hmm. it's live now. Are you going to go live in the morning, in the afternoon, evening or whatever? Like, do you have a time? You know, honestly, right now, I don't have a, in my own brain, you know, some other of my team members might have a specific time in their head. Uh, but obviously, we're going to do it as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, there's no specific date and time you know per time zone or anything like that currently if there is we'll definitely launch out an announcement Mm -hmm. at some point today being august 31st of course yeah um, this is being released on the first but yeah no we'll definitely try to communicate to the best of our abilities to people when the actual time is Mm -hmm. i know that our dev team is pushing a lot of updates today so we might actually see some changes on the front end already including a new home page um some other ui updates with our two-factor authentication you'll see the premium plans put back in there as Mm -hmm. well so like i said we'll be rolling out some updates um so the platform will essentially ease into itself perfect um, going live awesome and uh from a user point of view from someone that has uh, a couple of vps up and running or the free vps that have been testing for some months what does it mean going live i know you sent a really thorough email with the full description what's going to happen and it was great like your email communication is really clear and easy to understand but can you give us a quick overview what's going to happen to pre-existing vps and if the user that they have some stuff online that they actually use right now they Mm -hmm. could experience some downtime so um we sent out a few emails at this point and i have plenty of um informational articles written up about the transition to live. So just to clarify, the actual beta environment closes on um, October 1st. Mm. So what that means is that anyone who has a pre-existing VPS right now who's been a beta user has until October 1st. So there's a 30-day grace period to actually migrate that machine to our live platform. And so all they need to do to do that is essentially just log into their account Um, It'll take them to their dashboard, obviously. And there's going to be a little button on there now that says migrate VPS to live. So all all they have to do is click that, confirm any costs of the server uh, to keep it running in the live environment from that point on. Mm -hmm. And then it's just an automatic process. They don't need to actually manually migrate their data to a different server or anything like that. We have it all built in on the back end and it's going to be a completely automatic process. It takes less than a minute. Um, And like I said, they have until October 1st yeah. to start doing that. So that's what's going to happen to the existing DPSs. Um, with that being said as well, if people don't want to actually migrate their machines or they want to spin up a new one, then they can, of course, just create a new VPS mm-hmm. or they can just let that machine die off after October 1st because we're, we're just going to wipe them at mm-hmm. that point. But, of course, we're trying to give as much notice as possible. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> someone doesn't come to us on October 2nd and say, hey, where's my school project? You know? <laughs> yes. where's, where, what happened to my website or my my store? Yeah. You know? So we're, we're trying to tell people as much as we can right now um, that this is the situation. And it's really easy to do. I've tested it probably 40 different times myself <laughs> just to make sure everything's working properly. Yeah. And I can assure it is. And it's really easy, just a few clicks. And you're good to go. Wow, that's amazing. It sounds like a dream. Like usually when there's a transition from beta, like staging to production is always like, oh, Uh back up your data because probably you're going to lose everything or no, you cannot transition. You have to restart it from scratch. And that's super annoying. I mean, that being said though, it's it's always smart to create a backup or a snapshot before you do anything extensional, you know, so that's definitely a recommendation, Mm -hmm. you know, if you do want to be extremely safe then to back up your data, yeah. of course. But, you know, that being said, the process is really secure, super easy, and it's all mm-hmm. done for you. It's just a matter of switching um, website environments. Fantastic. <laughs> so your starting point, and whenever I talk about the starting point, again, users start asking, really? Is it true? <laughs> like, how is that possible? You start offering VPS at the lowest price of $1 per month. Mm-hmm. 
how in the hell is possible this kind thing? Like it's uh, I don't think it's like any anywhere else you can find this type of price. You know, it, and I've done my research, and you can't. And I'm not just saying that because I'm biased towards sky silk, sure. obviously, <laughs> but. I have actually sat there and tried to and done research and compared specs mm -hmm. and plans of all the different, at least well-known competing platforms. Um, it is the lowest to start out with. Um, yeah. You know, that being said, the specs of the $1 plan, you know, they start in our basic tier and they have um, one vCPU, 512 megabytes of RAM and 10 gigabytes of SSD storage. Mm -hmm. You know, all their plans contain SSD, um, aside from premium, which is NVMe. Yeah, uh, SSD. But yeah, so a big part of the the price point is, you know, going back to uh, previous conversations, we really don't want to provide any barrier to entry. We want anyone who's looking for a server or trying to at least learn about how to act, um, administer them or, you know, host certain apps on them. You know, we don't want to draw those people away because they can't afford us. That shouldn't be an issue mm -hmm. in with cloud computing in general. Um, given that it's just both a valuable skill and a valuable technology to pretty much any application in life now, uh, we want, like I said, no barriers to entry. And we just want to be able to offer an affordable price point that people can use us with, essentially. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. And I probably like this entry level at the entry point of your all your offering is mostly for users that like you probably don't expect agencies of big corporation and enterprise level using your entry level VPS, but mostly like students or someone that wants to boot up a server for their school project or course, just yeah. something like that. So it's it's really useful because it doesn't exist an alternative like that. Yeah, and you, you hit the nail on the head there. You know, you're we don't expect someone to build a website with the type of traffic of Facebook and host it on a one dollar server. Yeah. I mean, anyone who knows what they're doing, of course, wouldn't go after a plan like that. Yeah. The one dollar server isn't meant for people uh, with the larger projects. It's meant for like you were explaining for the people who are looking for an affordable server that doesn't require a whole lot of power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most times when people are deploying a server, they already know the specs they need. And so they're going to eventually just pick a plan that's perfect for them yeah um, and their specific needs and anything they need to get done with the server mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to provide that price point for people who you know might not be sure or want to test something or you know use it as a test environment or um, you know like you mentioned the smaller school projects yeah. there's because we do have three pricing tiers and within each tier there's about if i'm not mistaken about 12 or 13 different plans within each and yes. of course they increment and resources so there's you know almost 40 different resource plans you can actually choose from uh, so you know one dollar is extremely nice but mm -hmm. just to get it out there we have plenty of other plans available from the one dollar basic to an extremely super almost overpowered premium vps with 40 cores you know yeah that's insane like i'm 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 tempted to just spit it <laughs> spin it up and just like test it for like 20 seconds but yeah <laughs> you know it's funny when we offered the premium vps hosting uh for testing on beta we had a ton of people spinning up 32 core machines just all day long and it, it was just really funny to see because we were just thinking, you know, how many people, you know, what are, what are they doing with those servers? Nothing. Here? Just a lot of power. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. You just like spit it out and just see like, oh, infinite yeah, power. Just, just yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so like a little bit of uh, devil's advocate here. Is this lower price sustainable in the long run or is just this temporary to attract user and then you're already planning to bump it up in price or you expect that this low price can be maintainable on the long run just to yeah give an entry level access to users and then automatically probably kind of naturally they will transition to a higher tier yeah i mean that's a completely fair question and i'm glad you brought it up because mm -hmm. something we've actually discussed in our meeting is you know we hate the term introductory pricing we feel like it's kind of sneaky like we were talking about uh, prior to yeah. people having um, reservations about adding a credit card for a service that says free. Mm -hmm. You know, like we tried to be as transparent as possible. You know, this is for identification purposes. You know, it truly is free. You know, just come see for yourself. Um, that being said, we don't plan on bumping the price. We don't want to, 
we don't want to use any sort of sneaky marketing tactics like that to try to just grasp users in and, you know, just, again, pull the rug out from underneath them. You know, that's not what we really stand for as a company. Um, so we don't plan on raising those prices at any point. And we do want to try to keep consistent with being one of the most affordable and truly legitimate services out there. Uh, because there's not many people who are offering that many resources at sure. that certain price point. And in addition to that, you know, we want to build a community around us and let people know that this is a great place for anyone as small as learning a school project mm -hmm. or, you know, a larger enterprise corporation who might be, who would be the ones using those 40 core machines. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it, like I said, it's a completely fair question mm -hmm. and I understand yours and probably other people's concerns about something like that but price isn't something we are going to budge and i love the fact that you can referring to like building the community and the the um, i was really impressed by the fact that you open a publicly accessible discord account where everyone can sign up and start asking questions we while like your competitors whenever you have an issue you send an email to the support and probably they have a chat but you're in line for 20 minutes Right. And sometimes they don't even answer. Instead, like I, I joined the Discord app and everyone can ask a question and pretty much some of you answer right away with the with the answer. If it's a bug, they address the, the issue and they suggest solutions or it's it's really great. It's really responsive. It feels like you care a lot about the end user. Are you worried that that Discord channel is gonna grow too much that you cannot handle the requests and all the messages? Yeah, so I mean, I think that's an issue. I wouldn't really call it an issue, but it's more mm -hmm. so a blessing in disguise. But it's a good problem to have yeah. um, when something gets too big to handle. But that being said, it's something we have thought about ourselves and how we're going to plan on mitigating that. Um, you know, with that being said, we have some users currently that, are, that act as uh, channel moderators. So once it does grow, we're going to have more moderators. And nice. of course, we'll always be adding more employees to our SkySilk team mm -hmm. to help moderate that. I have the Discord open pretty much all day long on my computer and pop in every now and then when I actually can help someone with a certain technical question and whatnot. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, ultimately what we... Oh, and, and that being said, we also have a SkySilk bot in there now who oh, yeah. is going to... who has functionality and will expand its functionality to sort of parse the conversations in there and, mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, we already have it catching for any profanities or it verifies users. Um, so we make sure that anyone in the channel is actually a Discord, or sorry, not Discord, obviously, yes, Discord too, but yeah. a SkySilk <laughs> user. So we have all the vetting processes there in hand. Um, so when it does get bigger, ultimately what we would like to do or like to have happen is have the server essentially manage itself, you know, almost act as like Sky Silk's own stack overflow or oh, yeah. something like that where people can have conversations and those who answer are part of the community themselves and yeah. because they're knowledgeable on the subject and they want to share that knowledge with other people who are asking those questions mm -hmm. or like, hey, I really understand this. Let me pop in and help you guys out. That's so yeah, great. ultimately the server will become self-sustaining. Hopefully, of course, <laughs> um, definitely some moderation will be required, but it's it's definitely a contingency that we've um, thought about and have planned to help mitigate if yeah. it ever does grow to that proportion. That's great. Yeah, let's hope it grows because it's amazing. <laughs> so I yeah, finished. I didn't mean to say if I meant to say when. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, so I I kind of like finished trying to poke holes to sky silk and asking these questions that hopefully that don't make you too uncomfortable but no, no, it's no, no, like no, no. are kind of like normal questions that everyone that it's a bit skeptical as you say from this internet world where someone offers you something and it's not true because it's just all fake so uh it's it's good to have this conversation and tell the user hey no you can trust us because what we say it's actually what we do and yeah. we don't have anything hidden uh right now i would like to talk a little bit more of the nitty-gritty stuff and the the, the the details of the sky silk platform what you offer inside it and extra things that are not kind of common for other vps providers so sure. first i would like you to explain a little bit what are the sky silk points and why the users should care about those and start using them and how can they benefit about the sky from the sky seal points yeah so i mean sky 
sky silk points we call them sky points conveniently sky, uh, uh. um the way i always try to ex- like to explain it it's essentially a cashback reward system you know so like let's say you have a visa card and you're getting flight miles mm-hmm. for every transaction you make that's essentially what sky points are is it's our unique reward system which offers users essentially cash back in the form of sky points um, on any transaction they make. The way it works is 100 of those points is equivalent to a $1 value. So let's say you have 1,000 sky points, that's going to be a $10 value, and that can be redeemed for prepaid gift cards, which the list will expand, but currently we have Best Buy, Amazon, and, um, oh my god, I'm blanking on the last one, (laughs) Visa, just Visa. Oh, wow. Um, And Or it can be applied immediately towards account credit, Mm -hmm. so that's another way to get essentially free VPS um, through the reward system. And if you do have that $10 credit, you know, you could essentially get up to 10 months paid for with Mm -hmm. the Skypoint rewards. So that kind of in itself shows the true power of racking them up and earning them. Uh, and and whatnot. Ultimately, with that point being said, I also want to mention that since we're launching, we're doing early signups. So anyone who does sign up will get a thousand sky points um, wow. off the bat. So that's a ten a ten dollar credit, like I mentioned. Yeah. And we also have other programs like referrals. So if you refer a friend, that friend who accepts your referral mm-hmm. gets ten dollars to start out with okay. in a crown credit and. Once that friend that you've referred, this is just the logic we have set up right now. So once that friend you have referred spends $50 within his account, his or her account in that first year that they're a member, then the referrer gets uh, 2,500 sky points, so $25 value. So like I said, there, there's lots of opportunities to earn a lot of these things that you can, that can in turn, again, make the platform even more affordable for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, ten dollars are like ten months of the lowest yeah. <laughs> lowest tier. That's wow. That's incredible. Or, or I mean, up to two months free on the premium service for yeah. the the starting plan. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so you currently offer two server locations, one of the West Coast and one on the East Coast. Yeah. And the East Coast one in New York, you opened up like recently in June. Uh, mm-hmm. It was kind of curious for me, and I'm I'm kind of like I, I want to know the reasons why. Like you decided to open an extra server location before stepping out of beta. It was a matter of testing more and scaling up before going public, or something else was like the decision maker of this, like opening another server location. Yeah, so it was more so the former of what you said, mm-hmm. um, wanting to expand and scale up before going live. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that our infrastructure and the back end was working properly in a separate location and that we could um, get all the users working properly and deploying to alternate locations before actually going live. Mm-hmm. And to kind of go on that point, adding more locations in the future is definitely something on our list. Of okay. course, I mean, um, we would love to expand to different locations around the world, you know, Europe being one of those definitely mm-hmm. before other areas so we do plan to expand and the reason for adding the second location in beta was to we first we wanted to have a larger footprint within you know at least the u.s to start out with to Mm -hmm. add more uh, flexibility in terms of deployments you know so if people happen to be a little bit closer to the east coast you know we'll have lower ping and whatnot yeah but yeah overall it was really so we could add an extra layer of testing to the platform before we actually launched and have the proper steps to take yeah. in turn for when we do want to expand to another location. And, you know, in the unfortunate circumstance that things, whatever break, mm-hmm. we already have all those answers to any questions that we, that might arise when we do actually expand to our third and fourth and fifth locations. True. Awesome. I remember that I've been using SkySeal for almost five months now probably Uh i'm not 100 percent sure but i never experienced a downtime i guess like only i experienced one single downtime when actually i was recording another podcast episode and i was like talking about sky silk and needed to access the pricing and the website was down but my vps was still up Hmm. do you how many, and this is like, you cannot answer to this question if you want, but how many downtime, like, shitty days you had since you launched SkySilk? And there was some day that was, like, super terrible and something really bad happened, or it was pretty smooth? Um, 
you know, I can't really speak for the actual number yeah. of downtimes. Um, we always perform like routine maintenance or if we have to do any firmware updates, for example, we actually just did a small little update yesterday mm -hmm. for security in the Intel chips, because I'm not sure if you heard about oh, the, yeah? the certain vulnerabilities that have been coming out lately. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we provided some updates to protect against those. Luckily, no attacks have ever been recorded. But mm -hmm. you know, just to, uh, just to give peace of mind to the users, you know, mm -hmm. we are keeping up to date with all that, so all the all these sort of uh, I guess threats that have been researched and kind of pulled out yeah. from the shadows. But yeah, that being said, if we ever do are expecting any downtime for maintenance or anything like that, we always notify our users, and it's really never more than a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, there have been a few times where we've been down, um, you know, just to be fully transparent. Of sure. course, everyone has issues with technology here and yeah. there. It, it, it would be a perfect world if we never did experience anything like that. Um, like I said, I can't speak to the exact number, mm -hmm. but for the most part, it's been, you know, very consistent. And like I said, if we ever are experiencing anything, we're always very communicative with our users. Mm -hmm. That's another reason why, why that the or another area where the Discord comes into play and provides to be very useful mm -hmm. is because you know it's a direct contact with our users, and we can say, "Hey guys, you know we're experiencing a few issues here. We're troubleshooting, and we're going to be back up in you know X amount of time. You know, if we ever do have anything um, substantial happen, then yeah. we'll always communicate it to people and try to." Uh, troubleshoot the issue as quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned in this direct email that you're gonna, you're planning to release new features and extra things for SkySilk related to SkySilk. And in particular, you were talking about the SkySilk mobile app, the boosts mm -hmm. option to enable 24 hour temporary VPS scaling and premium plans will be available after going live. Can you can you elaborate more? Can you tell us what is the SkySeal app, how this boost thing work, and what can we yeah. expect from the premium plans? Yeah, of course. Um, so first and foremost, the app is something one of our colleagues here have been working has been working extremely hard on. Mm -hmm. um, so the app is essentially going to share the same functionality as the desktop version, uh, so to say. And, you know, you can do anything from deploy a VPS, you can manage your existing ones, you can monitor them. So you, you in the VPS dashboard, you'll have some nice uh, graphs which show your usage for all the resources oh, in wow. the VPS currently. Um, so it's really easy if, you know, if you don't want to sign into the website on your computer and you're just sitting on the couch at night, mm -hmm. you can just hop on the app and kind of check how everything is going. You know, there's also going to be built-in mobile SSH and VNC consoles on there. So, you know, I don't know many people who are going to be doing much server administration mm -hmm. from their phone. But, you know, in case of small tasks that need to be done, or like I said, if you want to check up on your VPS, then it's really easy to use. You can just hop in there and get on the terminal if you need to um, directly from your mobile. So that's going to be, it's it won't be available on the day of launch, but most likely the following week it will be in the app store mm -hmm. uh, which is something else to mention we currently only have an ios build of the app mm -hmm. and so for people who are on android and want to use the app then we are actively working on getting an android version out there as well yeah uh, and we added some extra security to the app with uh, touch and face id and we eventually plan on implementing the app as a two-factor authentication method for users on the site itself. So they don't have to, currently the way we have it set up is through Google Authenticator. Yeah. And so we would love to rather use our app itself mm -hmm. and kind of keep everything in-house in, in that way. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what there is to say about the app is, you know, it'll share all the same functionalities. It has the mobile SSH and VNC consoles if you do need to use those mm -hmm. and you can do essentially anything you would do from the front end on your desktop on the mobile app. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's really <laughs> that's really amazing. Sometimes it happens like of course that will be like just a crazy person only using SSH via like through a mobile phone. No, mm -hmm. it's like you you have to have some serious issues, but sometimes it happens <laughs> that you need like I was in need of SSH into my um, a production server for my company like a couple of weeks ago and I didn't have the computer with me so I had mm -hmm. to run back home and access the computer instead like being able to quickly do it via a mobile app without e using a, like a third-party app because you don't want to 
give SSH access or like having your SSH key attached to a third party app that is not actually the same provider of your right. BPS. So Yeah, and that's where that you know, the SSH console button comes in handy so you don't have to mm-hmm. do that. And and like you mentioned, in emergency situations like that, that's where it'll provide extremely useful. Yes, indeed. Uh, what about these boosts? Actually, I just accessed my VPS dashboard and I see this little cute orange button with a Thunderbolt there that says boost. Yep. So boosts, um, you know, so essentially when you typically want to scale a VPS, um, it's permanent, uh, mm-hmm. mainly because if you increase the storage and you happen to go over mm-hmm. that storage, it, there's really no way to scale down um, because you know we can't just delete data yeah, it's true. to scale down. Um, so boosts um, affect both the CPU and the RAM, not the SSD for that purpose, but they are essentially really cost-effective way of scaling your machine temporarily. Um, mm-hmm. So like you mentioned, it's 24 hours. And what, how the way it works is, let's say you have a small VPS deployed with us and you hit boost. So essentially what it's going to do is boost up into the next plant. So for us, that would be medium. So it's going to take the vCPU and the RAM of the medium plan, and it's going to allot that to your machine for the next 24 hours. So you're boosting your CPU and your RAM for 24 hours. And after that 24 hours is over, it'll go back down. And there is a cost to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very small fraction of the cost of the plan that is uh, available in succession. Mm-hmm. So it'll show you what it will cost to actually boost. So it might be anywhere from like 50 cents to a buck to maybe like $4, depending on what you're actually boosting to and what you're boosting from. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's a great method if you need like temporary scaling, you know, if, if you're compiling large amounts of code. Um, for example, I ran into an issue last night where I was compiling some SAS code for CSS and mm-hmm. it got it just got to a point where it was taking it was just taking a long time to yeah. implement any new changes. And so this would be a great purpose for anyone who's looking to do more data intensive tasks. Mm-hmm. It, a shorter amount of time, but don't really want to permanently scale their machines, you know, or if they want to test something or uh, send more traffic to their websites that they're hosting and to see how things are running with more resources, then Mm -hmm. this is a perfect alternative to permanently increasing your costs, you know, at the risk of not really needing those extra resources, or if you just need it for specific little tasks here and there, then it's a really cost effective way to get the extra resources without having to pay more ultimately in the Mm -hmm. long run and uh, have a larger machine that you wouldn't really otherwise need. That's fantastic. That's a really handy feature. Definitely, like I see the usage, like the usefulness of this. Right now, you said it's automatic, like it gets automatically the ex- like the next level, like the higher level of your current situation, whatever yeah. VPS you have. Are you planning in the future to make it like uh, customizable by the user that can, for example, like boost it with a large VPS for 48 hours? Um, so it's, it's definitely something we brainstormed. Mm-hmm. Um, but to kind of go off that point, if you do want to boost on top of a boost, sort of like a boostception, yeah, then you can do that. So if you boost from like small to medium, yeah. then you can also boost from medium to large once you've boosted to that medium. Oh. So you can keep going up and up and up as high as the largest plan if you truly wanted to. Yeah. And they just last for 24 hours. Yeah. Um, but in terms of actually customizing The boosts themselves, you know, say jump from like a small to a Leviathan machine. Mm -hmm. Um, That's that's a feature we've uh, thought about implementing. But for right now, the way it works is, like I said, it's in succession. So it's going to go from um, A to B, B to C, C to D, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are you planning to implement any auto scaling capabilities to the VPS or are they already there? Um, So... In theory, they're already there. It's, that, that again, is a feature that we've definitely talked about with the team that are amongst each other. Mm-hmm. And it kind of goes back into making everything as easy and user-friendly as possible without dumbing it down too much. And, yeah. you know, of course, being transparent to everybody. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Uh, so I'm seeing that right now, and you announced it before, like with the email for the end of beta, that the premium plans will be implemented again after you go live. And I was trying to check the premium plans in the VPS because they were available for a limited amount of time. And I was really impressed by the specs. 
can you give us a quick overview? Because now I cannot see them anymore, and they're, they're so yeah, good. Uh, yeah, they did take it off the front end website. Mm -hmm. um, we just wanted to test it for a short amount of time. Um, so just to kind of clarify the differences in the specs between, say, basic, standard, and premium, but focusing mainly on premium here, um, the main differences is, one, the premium machines have an option of both or of either AMD or Intel mm -hmm. processors. So the AMD ones we use are the AMD Epic CPUs, uh, particularly the, the 7601s. Um, so what those are designed to do is essentially, of course, uh, speed up really intensive tasks. So, you know, they the way AMD themselves markets it is that they bring um, the power of the two socket architecture into one. So each CPU themselves has uh, about, if I'm remembering the numbers correctly, about 128 lanes of PCI, mm -hmm. um, about four, it's either four to eight, I think it's four terabytes of memory. Um, it could be eight. I can't exactly remember yeah. the numbers right now, but um, yeah, the, they're powerful and they're not like we were speaking about the security vulnerabilities mm -hmm. of the Intel CPUs earlier. Yeah. Uh, those haven't been found to be vulnerable to any attacks like that. Um, they use what they call silicon root of trust technology mm -hmm. for extra layer of data security, essentially. Um, so we have those processors in the premium machines, and we also have optimized Intel processors, which we now offer the option for users to choose between them yeah. when they're deploying a VPS. Um, so if you do deploy a premium plan, you can choose AMD or Intel. Aside from that, I mentioned that we have NVMe SSD. Yes. And for people who are unfamiliar with NVMe, it's essentially a protocol that is many, many times more powerful than traditional SATA. The way I usually explain it is that the the uh, NVMe storage has what's called a Q-depth of about 65,536, if I remember that number correctly. And so that, um, in turn, can hold up to 65,000 plus commands per Q. Wow. So, which, whereas traditional SATA drives um, have a Q-depth of about 32. So just hearing those two numbers in comparison <laughs> to each other... Um, it's, it's a huge, it's a yeah. huge differential there. And not, so, not 32,000, 32. Yeah, not 32,000, 32. 000, 32. <laughs> um, essentially what that's going to do, you know, you will never have any sort of bottlenecks on processes, you know, where things slow up because there's too many requests coming in at once. It's yeah. perfect for more data intensive tasks. Um, it queries databases extremely quickly, uh, mm -hmm. when we ran our benchmarks on it and with the MySQL tests or my sequel tests yeah. uh, rather uh, a few months back when we were building the architecture yeah so it, it's extremely quick with data and it's perfect for people who are you know if if you just want a faster server overall then nvme the the pair of nvme and nd is really what gives you that bang for your buck in that section um so alternative to those pieces of actual hardware in the premium servers um it of course comes with more features that are um, standard across all the plans. So, for example, mm -hmm. it has more bandwidth. Um, anywhere it can be anywhere from up to eight hundred to a gig of bandwidth. Um, we have premium support, so anyone with premium machines, we're going to prioritize the support for them. Yeah, sure. Um, and just kind of going down the list here, mm -hmm. it has more optimized RAM as well. Each plan has um, DDoS protection built in as well. Yeah trying to think of the other thing oh yeah um another thing kind of going back to the sky points uh the premium machines earn 10 times the amount so you're oh. effectively earning 10 percent of your money spent back so if you spend five dollars a month you're going to get 50 sky points um if you spend um, ten dollars a month you're going to get 100 sky points so you're going to get a dollar back essentially which is 10 percent of your bill so that, that's a lot of money back using the premium machines. I, I can't think of all the different features up, yeah, right sure. off the top of my head, but, but yeah, there if are you a go lot. to Creative yeah. APS, uh, you'll see the tiles there, and it's going to kind of put side to side all of the different um, yeah. specs of each. And uh, But I covered pretty much all the main ones. Yeah, it's great. And it's, it's a massive a massive bump, a massive boost in uh, in performance and in, in specs. Definitely. And definitely and, and big, big thanks to the AMD and, and the main. Oh, Sorry, yeah. NVMe stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, those are fantastic. And these are plans like more targeted towards enterprise level. And yes, as a regular user, I could speed it out, but it's not like I will never use the actual specs and I will never use all the, the, mm -hmm. the, the power that those machines offer. It, like me as a 
developer that has his own personal website so it's not right yeah and like i mentioned before you know the people who come they they know what they need yes, um exactly and you, each tier is meant for a different type of consumer for the vps mm -hmm. and ultimately it, it also comes down to you know how much power you want how much speed you want you know if you want your websites to load insanely quickly then mm -hmm. of course you would just go for a premium um but for most people, you know, they'll probably stick within the standard category and each plan, each basic standard and premium, they're all fit for different purposes, yes. but ultimately the same purpose. It's just a matter of uh, the resources you want and or desire. So uh, I think we're almost at the end of this fantastic interview. Now we are like you are you have the stage. This is your time to plug whatever thing we didn't talk about the interview. Do we miss something you want to uh, reiterate something important or something you want to tell the audience? Yeah, I think I touched on a few of the points earlier. Um, a major one being, you know, like like I said, we're doing the early signups, so any new user gets a thousand Sky Points right off the bat, mm -hmm. which is ten dollars in account credit. Um, so I mean, you can s start using things free yeah. of cost right out right out of the gates. Um, we're always implementing new ways for people to earn Sky Points, like I mentioned before. So uh, there's that, and I also wanted to remind people who are within the beta program that they always get the 25% lifetime discount. Oh, yes. Uh, that's yeah, so that, that's that's one point that I almost missed, which is super important. So yes. for those who are kind of on the fence about perhaps migrating their VPS to live, you know, they might not be able to afford it or anything mm -hmm. like that. You know, just remember you have your Sky Points in your account already, which you can now redeem. And each beta user got 500 of those and mm -hmm. an extra 200 if you liked us on Facebook and, and followed us on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, so you can redeem those immediately and put them towards your account statements, um, which won't happen until October 1st to mention. Uh, but yeah, I just, any, like I said, anyone who's on the fence about migrating from beta to live, you know, just remember you'll always get that discount. You have the Sky Points in your account. You can always refer your friends yeah. and earn more. I just wanted to stress that we're always going to find ways to you know provide our customers with opportunities like that to save money and kind of become a bigger part of the community and you know that being said as well the discord channel is of course a great place for people who are you know anyone who's just learning to people who are uh, experts in mm -hmm. certain categories to go and communicate with each other share their projects any ideas we have a suggestion box of any features they think might be useful uh, which we do by the way, always look at, and we do take a lot of um, user interaction into consideration in our meetings. And so nice. I don't want anyone to feel like their input is useless because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's a big part of why we are where we are today is because of our user input. You know, they've been invaluable to us in mm -hmm. terms of testing the product and making sure everything is going smoothly. You know, now that we're live, there's going to be no more. It's not, it's no longer closed beta. Yeah. It's available to the public. You know, early signups get a thousand sky points. All beta users still get that 25% lifetime discount. You know, the boost features are avail available. The app is coming. And like I said before, we're always thinking of new features to implement yeah. and new templates that we're going to start building for server deployments and, we're always looking to expand on locations and ultimately what I'm trying to say is there is a bright future ahead for Sky. So oh, yeah, definitely. There, there's really no end in sight and we're, we'll always try to be as forward and direct as possible throughout the whole process. Yeah, it was indeed a, a bright start already. So the future can only be brighter. Oh, it's going to be fantastic, I'm sure. Definitely. And, and you know, just to again, to give you a thanks for being so supportive of us throughout oh. the whole, throughout your use of sky silk i know mm -hmm. it's only been about five months now but you know i i myself personally i watch just about every video you post using oh, wow. your hardware <laughs> i've learned a lot myself from your videos oh thank you yeah that's fantastic it's actually really easy to use it's 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 amazing like i i've been using aws for probably like two years just to keep mentioning competitors because i do that <laughs> and uh, then i i switched to digital ocean and it was like eh, i never felt like compelled in using their products and aws is such a pain in the ass to actually manage uh mm -hmm. manage well the VPN. dashboard gets really confusing i feel like they're always trying to um, sign me up for another have yeah. me deploy a new server when i already have an environment there yes exactly uh, yeah, it, the the dashboard gets a bit confusing there, and and that's another thing, another problem we'd like to solve is mm -hmm. we, you know, there's what you see is what you get with Sky So, you know, there's exactly. no hidden costs like we were talking about before. There's no, you know, there's no little contingencies 
in our platform that are going to pop up in your face later or make you confused on how to use it. It's a very straightforward process when it comes to deployments. You know, you just pick your plan, pick mm-hmm. your template or mm-hmm. your location first, pick your template, mm-hmm. and then, you know, configure your name, your VPS name, password, SSH key, and then boom, you're good to go. Yeah. And that's really all there is to it when it comes to the deployment process. And um, hopefully we can start adding more and more features to the dashboard, like I mentioned, yeah. to just make it even easier to use. Awesome. Well, uh, that's pretty much it for these episodes, this episode. Thank you so much for your time, Steve. I'm sure you're, you're like a super busy person, but you dedicated all this full hour in explaining what SkySilk is and all the options that the user can use. And of course, all the links to all the things that you talk will be in the description below this video and in the podcast. And I think I'm going to also do a, a blog post to just to recap all the most important features and the pricing and the, the numbers of the uh, discount amount and all this kind of good stuff because it's always better to have also something written super quickly that you can go there and click and access SkySilk. But I will do even more videos about SkySilk and I'm preparing an Ansible series of tutorials because now that I did all those DevOps, it's kind of annoying repeating the same things and sure. typing <laughs> the same thing. Imagine like you have to speak like boot up 10 servers with the same configuration you don't want to do it manually so we need an automation and ansible it's fantastic and i'm gonna use skysilk to do all these good things so hey well that you know of course as you know that means the world to us and it's been my absolute pleasure of you having me on here it's it's been great to finally speak with you oh yes (laughs) be able to really you know kind of we want to get our team out there more and communicate more with people. And, Mm -hmm. you know, any opportunity like this is great. And uh, we appreciate, like I said, your support. And we hope that a lot of other users and potential users can see the potential in the platform. Yeah. And there's a train in the background. (laughs) There is. Yeah. We're, our offices here are next to one of our Amtrak uh, (laughs) here. It's great. It gives an amazing, uh, amazing background noise. It's It's a nice atmosphere. Oh yeah. It was really compelling. We don't use clocks. We just, judge by when the train passes by <laughs> are the trains on time oh yeah oh, like okay. to the second every single oh, day oh wow that's amazing excellent 